Well hello and welcome to my latest video. Been out for a little pootle this morning, uh, nothing too special uh, with my mate Simon. I, my, my new target, by the way, our new target is to do under 20 miles at under 10 miles an hour. Now this is harder than you might think. Some of you young young whippersnappers who are out on your flash fast bikes, you're, you're trying to go quicker and you're trying to go further. Our ambition is to go less, less further. Is that, a, is that a phrase? Less further? Anyway, our ambition is to go less further at a lower speed. And it's proving quite difficult, actually. You try and do under 20 miles and under 10 miles an hour average. Not easy. What are we talking about today? Well, I was thinking, uh, looking back on the, the Tour de France, which I know is finished now, great victory by um, Tadej Pogacar from uh, Slovenia, uh, a country that I was hoping to go to uh, this year with Marmot Tours, where I was going to do an uh, Austria, Italy and Monte Zoncalan. That doesn't include Slovenia, does it? Anyway, I think the tour was supposed to include Slovenia and Tadej Pogacar and Primoz Roglic are both from uh, Slovenia, but I didn't manage to go. So I thought, looking back on the Tour de France, some of the uh, expressions and the phrases that they use at Tour de France might be quite unfamiliar and quite strange if you're fairly new to cycling, you're fairly new to watching cycling on the television. So I thought I'd have a go at explaining what some of those expressions mean. So the first one I want to consider is Lantern Rouge. Lantern Rouge. Do you remember back in uh, uh, back in the 1960s, there was a big hit by the police, the uh, um, choir of the Metropolitan Police of London, and the song was called Roxanne. Do you remember that? Roxanne! Do you, do you remember that? Put on your red light! Or oh, you don't have to put on your red light! Roxanne! Do you remember that song? Yeah, their voice was perhaps a little better than mine is. Red light is Lantern Rouge in French and the song was a big hit in France but they couldn't call it Roxanne. The reason they couldn't call it Roxanne was that was the name of the wife of the president of France at the time so they ended up calling it, yes they called it Lantern Rouge, Red Light Lantern Rouge. And at the end of the Tour de France, they have, a, they have a big party, big celebration, and it ends with a karaoke. And the rider who does, does the best rendition of Roxanne, Stroke, Lantern Rouge, Red Light, is the one who is awarded the prize of Lantern Rouge for that year's Tour de France. And this year, and this is the first time it's happened, by the way. The winner of the green jersey, the points classification, which we'll come on to a minute, uh, in a moment, uh, was Sam Bennett. And Sam Bennett was also the Lantern Rouge. Not many people know that Sam Bennett has a very good singing voice. There is a little clip on YouTube. You have to search for it. But there is a clip on him on YouTube singing Roxanne, or in fact, Lantern Rouge, or Red Light, as it's known in France. So there you are. That's the derivation of Lantern Rouge. Peloton. What is the Peloton? You must have heard. Here comes the Peloton. The Peloton are riding down the road. The Peloton are going up the mountain. Well, Peloton is the name of a uh, bike company that does a static bike. Very popular uh, with wealthy uh, bankers, uh, solicitors, uh, estate agents, even our own Chancellor of the Exchequer. Uh, they ride on this on this static bike and they do spinning and they watch they watch the television and there is a, an instructor uh, who tells them how to turn the pedals or he says turn the pedals faster peloton or turn the pedals slower peloton or uh, try and look out of breath while you're cycling peloton and that's what the peloton is it's a big collection of static bikes which each of the World Tour teams uh, is obliged by UCI regulations. They have to have 10 of these Peloton bikes in the rear of their coaches. You would have seen the big coaches at the beginning and the end of the stages. So that's what the Peloton is. It's a big collection of static bikes. 
domestique. Domestique. You would have heard people say on the television, there goes the domestique, or uh, the domestique has gone back to the car to get some bottles. Domestique is the French version of the English word domestic. And domestic is another word for a cleaner. So the domestique in the tour uh, is the cyclist who has to clean the bikes at the end of the stage. Uh, they generally take it in turns. Uh, sometimes it goes to the youngest uh, cyclist in, in the team, although that is now frowned upon with, with age discrimination. Uh, sometimes it goes to the oldest rider. That is also frowned upon by uh, uh, age discrimination. So now they draw lots. And the cyclist who loses the, the lot uh, becomes the domestic for that day, or the domestique, and it is the role of the domestique to clean the bikes. And if they've had a if they've had a tough stage, they've done I don't know 200 kilometres or something like that, and they've done some massive alpine climbs to then have to get back to the hotel to change out of your cycling kit and to change into your overalls and your and your galoshes and a big apron and gloves and then and get a, a bucket and some fairy liquid, other brands of detergent are available, and to clean all the bikes from the team. It's not it's not a pleasant duty. So none of the cyclists want to be the domestique in the Tour de France, but they have no choice. They have no choice. The other phrase that you may have come across is the broom wagon. And you may hear commentators, Brian Smith or, or Bob Hatch or Sean Kelly or, or the other one, Carlton Kirby, or even Dan Bolting on ITV4 says, here comes the broom wagon. Well, when the cyclists uh, are riding along and they have a gel or they have some of their food or, or whatever it is, and they throw the wrappers on the ground and people say, well, this is, this is disgraceful. This is environmentally very poor. So the broom wagon was introduced only three years ago, in fact. And uh, the, the broom wagon is a, is a lorry and it has a big trailer on the back and is the trailer and in the trailer. There is a big group, about 20, sometimes 30, uh, young people, uh, often school leavers, and they've been, uh, and, and it's a it's kind of job creation scheme uh, by the French government, and they are given a broom, and their job is to sweep up all of these gel wrappers, all of the, the rubbish that is left on the road after all the cyclists have gone through, and they sweep it up. So again, you can find on YouTube, no, it's not, hard, not easy to find, but if you search a uh, broom wagon, or you can search uh, sweepers, or you can search um, French school leavers sweepers plus broom wagon, and you'll come across a little clip of about 20 or 30 uh, young people uh, with brooms. Um, the, the brooms are, are quite big, quite big brooms with special, special bristles, special bristles designed for the Tour de France, and they sweep up all of the gel wrappers and all of the rubbish, and that's why the roads are kept quite so clean. Now the Flam Rouge, you may have seen this, the, the rider, the rider, they're coming to the end of the stage and the commentator says, there, there is the Flam Rouge. And you say to yourself, what is the Flam Rouge? What, what is that? Well, Flam uh, in French means flame and uh, Rouge, as you know from the uh, Lantern Rouge, means red. So it's the red flame. And what it is, uh, just a, a mile before the end of the stage, uh, there, there is a kind of burning, burning ring, like you, you know, you used to see in the circus. There'd be a burning ring that the that the the circus master would would set fire to, and then the tiger or the the elephant or or the the, the camel, uh, other animals are available, would have to jump through that burning ring. Well, what they've introduced now in the, in the Tour de France, make it more exciting, particularly for uh, a television audience, is a burning ring. So there is a, there is a big ring, big, big, you know what a ring is, big circular thing, which is set up a, a mile before the end of the stage. And when the, the cyclist comes through, and that first cyclist, he goes through, he goes through the flamme rouge, he goes through the red ring, and if he escapes without being singed or, or his, his, uh, his clothing doesn't catch fire, then he is adjudged to be the winner. And he gets the flamme rouge, which is a red, a red shirt that he's allowed to wear the next, the next stage. So that's what the, what the flamme rouge is. 
Now the polka dot. The polka dot jersey is awarded to the best climber on the stage and you may have seen it it's a it's a white jersey it's got red spots lots of red spots on it and those are those are polka dots so you think well why has it got red spots on the jersey well the first the first winner of the the polka dot jersey it wasn't a polka dot jersey at that time it was just a white jersey but the first winner of the the uh, the first climbing uh, first winner of this climbing classification uh, back in uh, 19, 1919 was René Dubois, René Dubois, um, known to his friends as Pontchartrain. So he was René Dubois Pontchartrain. And he had measles, uh, had a bad dose of the measles, measles during the Tour de France and came out in, in lots of red spots. But Pontchartrain, as he was known to his uh, adoring public, did not want to give up the race. He was determined, determined to finish. And so every time he got to the end of the stage, he would be there on the on the podium uh, on the podium at the end of the stage with his red, with his spotty face, with his with his measly, measly face and his measly expression like that, because he wasn't he wasn't very well. So he they awarded him the, the red spotted jersey in recognition of his achievement of, of winning while suffering from the, the measles. So he, he managed to uh, infect everybody else uh, in the race, uh, a bit like the, the, the President of the United States and managed to infect everybody else in uh, the whole of Washington DC is now uh, infected uh, in the same way as Pontchartrain, René Dubois, known as Pontchartrain, managed to infect all of the other riders uh, just because he had the, the measles. So that is the, the polka dot jersey. So the last one we're going to consider is the yellow jersey. Yes, you would have seen that the, the winner of each day, the cumulative winner of the uh, event and the winner at the end of the event is awarded a yellow jersey and then the, the yellow jersey. Well, why is it yellow? You may wonder. Well, you may well ask. And the reason for it, and again, uh, it's it's connected with illness, which is uh, uh, surprising. You remember that the polka dot jersey was caused by uh, uh, measles. The the yellow jersey was caused by caused by jaundice, and uh, a bad case of the ja of jaundice can make your skin go go yellow. And the uh, the first the first winner of the Tour de France before before there was a yellow jersey, uh, was known as Pierre Gonsoir. Pierre Gonsoir, uh, known to his friends as Poupou. Poupou. Pierre Gonsoir, known as Poupou, was the first winner of the Tour de France. And unfortunately, he had jaundice on the, on the last day. He was determined, was Poupou. Uh, he had uh, uh, a little gastric gastric trouble caused by his jaundice but he made it through to the end of the stage and when he got up on the the podium and they announced him as the winner of the stage they said uh, me, 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 monsieur poupou monsieur poupou vous vous êtes vous êtes jaune jaune uh, jaune by the way is, is yellow in french and he says oui oui jaune c'est c'est le jaundice jaundice and they said, jaundice? What? You rode the whole stage suffering from jaundice. And he said, oui, oui, monsieur. Uh, je, je, bo, je, 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 bo, oui, oui, monsieur. Just, just like that, because he spoke French. And in recognition of his tremendous achievement, they awarded him the yellow jersey. And ever since, ever since, the winner of each stage, each day, uh, is awarded a yellow jersey. Nothing to do. They're not expected to get jaundice. They don't have to get jaundice. And in fact, now with uh, the new uh, UCI medical protocols, if somebody gets jaundice, they are ejected, ejected, uh, ejected from from the race, bodily ejected if necessary, if they don't take the, the decision themselves. So they are they are thrown out. But back in those early days with uh, Monsieur Poupou, Poupou, who had jaundice, and got the, the jersey, which was subsequently yellow in recognition of Monsieur Poupou. So now, when you watch the Tour de France next year, and let's hope the, the Tour de France takes place at its usual time 
next year and you hear all these various expressions, you can go back to my video and you can look up and remind yourself what these things all mean. So glad to be of service, all part of the service. Thank you for watching this video. It helps to raise money for charity. Hope you've enjoyed it and see you next time.